Did you know that most diseases begin with dehydration on the cellular level? Well, today's episode is going to dive into that and so much more. So stay tuned. Welcome back. My name is Sarah, and this is the Sarah Kleiner Wellness Channel. Thank you so much for being here, especially during this time of transition. I appreciate each and every one of you and really appreciated all the kind comments from last week's video. You guys are really just the best. So thank you for all of your support. Today, I want to talk about dehydration beyond electrolytes and the, the amount of water that we drink. This is something that a lot of people talk about. And yes, minerals are very important, but it goes beyond sodium and potassium, magnesium, all of those things that are in common electrolyte powders. Now, I really don't like electrolyte powders because they give you specific ratios that may not work for your particular body. So it might be too much potassium in regards to sodium or too little potassium in regards to sodium, which is what I see a lot of in these powders. And these things can further drive mineral dysregulation within your body. So Jen Isabel Friend has really devoted most of her life and all of her work to studying water, how we become hydrated on this cellular level and understanding hi true hydration. So I think you guys are really going to enjoy this episode. There's so much in here. I worked really hard to create timestamps so you can navigate through the different topics and understand and maybe go back to different things that you didn't get on the first time around. I've had a lot of other water experts on the show, Dr. Gerald Pollack, Tracy Dew, Jonathan Butts from Natural Action Technology, and the episode that I did with Anna Lima Water. So make sure you check out those episodes on the channel if you want to dive deeper into this topic. Now, a quick little shout out to two sponsors. The first one is going to be Viva Rays. These are blue blockers. Now, circadian health and managing your light is also very important when it comes to proper hydration, believe it or not. We'll talk about this in this episode. I love Viva Rays because it's a very high quality product. If you happen to scratch them or drop them, they're still going to block out all the blue light, which is the issue that I have with a lot of the cheaper brands. If anything happens to those glasses, they just don't work as well. So use my code YOGI to save over at Viva Rays. And the second sponsor of today's episode is going to be Optimal Carnivore. This is their Brain Nourish product, Brain and Lion's Mane, Beef Brain and Lion's Mane, sustainably sourced. And I love the product, have used them prenatally as well as after pregnancy to help support my brain. And I use their organ meat complex to fill in nutritional gaps. Code Carnivore Y saves you 10%. I hope that you enjoy today's episode and I will talk with you again soon. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning into today's show. Today, I'm really excited to dive deeper into this topic of water, but kind of look at it from, I've had a lot of scientists and different people on. I've, I'd like to look at it kind of from a female perspective and then just also from you know, a, a different lens than we've already looked at. So thank you, Isabel, for being here today. Thanks so much for having me on. I'm excited to chat with you, Sarah. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about you. And I mean, how the heck did you even get interested in hydration and water and all of that? What was your what's your story? Well, it's been kind of a circuitous path, but I think it probably was seeded back in 2009. I was living in in New York at the time I was living in Brooklyn and I was a health coach and nutritionist and I've just always been fascinated by human optimization in this this deep core knowing that we have infinite potential within us. And at the time, I thought that really the key to unlocking that infinite potential would be through food because we are what we eat, right? And so I was studying a lot of nutrigenomics and how wild nutrition, wild crafting and foraging and eating non-domesticated food will unlock the vast potential of our genetic capacities and informs the RNA of how to unfold different DNA. And so I was really getting into wild crafting and foraging. And that's when I discovered Victor Schauberger. And I started wild crafting and foraging for water instead. And I just started going deep down into his incredible rabbit hole of brilliance. And um, for anyone on the who's listening who doesn't know who Victor Schauberger is, he was basically a water savant. Um, they say that for, you know, for water, he was for water what Nikola Tesla was for electricity, that he had understandings of water that just surpassed 
far beyond what uh, what we will reach even in a few hundred years. If we applied even one of his understandings, it would radically transform humanity. And so I started to realize through that, wow, water really has the, the keys for all of humanity's toughest questions, for our questions of health and medicine and climate and agriculture and economics and politics and psychology and sociology because water is life water holds the blueprints for life and so i started turning to water's wisdom in various ways and really it was drinking that wild water wild crafting and foraging for raw living spring water that i feel like re-patterned my whole body and then it was just kind of a geeky little hobby for many years, just reading everything I could get my hands on, studying all of the, you know, obscure scientific journals and like every little every little study that would come out about water. I just I would just eat it up. But it was it was still kind of a geeky little side thing until around uh, 2018. I was in a ceremony uh, here in Mexico called the moon dance and you fast for four days you don't sleep for four days you're doing this ancient mexica all night long you know singing chanting dancing and hundreds of women at the feet of the pyramids in teotihuacan and so you're just in this completely altered state and i was really i was going through my saturn beginning to go through my saturn return at the time so i was just really calling in like what am i here to do i've done a million different things i've been in jill of all trades you know what am i what am i here to do and it came through so clearly and spirit said just focus on water that's it i had no idea what that would look like because who has ever heard of a professional water expert especially one who doesn't have a science background um but from then that's just been all that i focused on and i've i've had the great honor of studying with a number of indigenous water wisdom keepers and um, studying with water priests out in Bali in the religion of Agamatirta for a long time and still reading everything I can get my hands on. So that's about how it's evolved. That's amazing. <laughs> and I think a lot of people that kind of listen to the show are very tuned into nutrition. I'm trying to help them understand, you know, that food is light, you know, as a light mm -hmm. form. But water holds light from sun, from the moon, it holds consciousness. And so, you know, I think we put so much emphasis on the foods we eat, which I think are important, but we don't really, I think water is kind of that afterthought, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what kind of things can you help people to accomplish with their health when they change their water and kind of how do you go about that with them? Mm -hmm. That's such a great question because I think that really is our our fundamental understanding. We grow up hearing you are what you eat, right? But it's almost mm -hmm. more true to say you are what you drink or you are what you absorb from the water of the mm -hmm. food that you eat. Because, you know, even to absorb any nutrients from the food that we eat, all nutrient absorption is mitigated by the osmotic flow of water into the cells. And so if you don't have good intracellular hydration, it doesn't matter how much you're spending on high quality food and supplements or how dialed in your diet is, you're not even going to absorb all of those nutrients, much less to absorb the frequencies of the spectrum of light that that food brings in as well. You brought up such a good point there because you know everything is vibration, everything is frequency. Food absolutely is light. It's information from the earth and from the sun that grew it. But what determines how much of that spectrum we absorb is how coherent our body water is. If your body water isn't coherent, it can't channel the frequencies, it can't channel that light spectrum. And, um, and so you don't absorb that um, electromagnetic information either. And so yeah. we have this perspective in medicine where it's like we treat ourselves like these uh like these solid beings when the truth is we are we are living water we are a way that water has to walk instead of flow you know if nine if 99.9 percent .9 of all of the molecules in our body are water that means 999 out of every thousand molecules in our body is water and yet modern medicine just looks at that one molecule, that one remaining molecule and says, oh, this is the one that governs biological function. This is the one that governs cell function. And it's so backwards that as we start to unlock the biology, the, the hydrophysiology and, and the biophysics of water, the more we realize that addressing those 999 will bring everything else into balance. Even if somebody has really poor nutrition, if you 
completely revamp their bio waters, and I mean structure their bio waters, um, restore the oceanic mineral composition, the, the mineral ratios of their bio waters, restore um, the proper isotopic balance of protium hydrogen rather than deuterium hydrogen. Um, you get all of the, these little factors of hydration in order, and the body is capable of healing absolutely everything. So it's a full 180 degree switch from looking at, our, at ourselves as just this one molecule that is really the solute, instead looking at the vast majority of what we are, which is the solution, literally. I agree. That's such a hard thing, I think, for people to buy into. And for me, it was the last, you know, I was talking with um, with Dolph and Mario yesterday from Analima about, you know, my whole journey of kind of switching away so much from hyper focusing on nutrition, you know, for my fertility. And the last thing I did was started being like a water dork, like, <laughs> okay, is this spring water? Do I have the right minerals? You know, I, I'm a huge fan of Quinton. Do I have the right minerals? Um, is it structured? You know, everything that I drink. And I was telling them like the only water that I've had during pregnancy has been structured with minerals. Mm -hmm. And like, they're like, oh, you know, what? It's going to be a very interesting child. Um, mm -hmm. But most people would be like, why the heck does that even matter? <laughs> you know, when you're yeah. looking at your health, because, but we have this like, we, we think of the body as like this chemical, put a chemical in mm -hmm. this chemical, this hormone, let's test this, let's test that. And when you look at the body with water, it's like this, like instant communication, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's a resonance that happens within the body and the organs are not just like this separate thing, but there's a communication system when you view the body that way in the in the viewpoint of water. Would you agree with that too? Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. There's this principle of quantum coherence when we're talking yes. about structured water in the body, where, like you said, it can communicate instantaneously, non-locally, every single water molecule can respond in the same moment. And it actually happens presynaptically. So we used to think that, you know, we would have um, a conscious response or even a subconscious brain-based response to our environment, and then that would trigger the cascade of neurochemicals and um, electrical signals through the nervous system and through the fascia and all of that. And what we've found is actually it's the exact opposite. Your body water responds first, and then you get the brain response. And it happens almost immediately, but it's just it's just um, quick enough for us to recognize that our consciousness actually exists in our body water. It doesn't exist in our brain. And because the body water can communicate so effectively and so quickly, it's really um, it's really profound because it it affects it's, it's basically the locus of the biology of belief. I'm sure you're well familiar with Dr. Mm -hmm. Bruce Lipton and his work mm -hmm. and how our, our thoughts actually pattern, our thoughts and emotions and our belief systems actually pattern our neurochemical responses and all of that. And the whole locus of, the whole modus operandi of that phenomenon is your body water because when you have a thought that is in a, a positive resonance, it creates syntropy in the body and that syntropy structures your bio water, which creates more instantaneous communication and literally a higher vibrational state because your body is the superconductor of vibration through your body. Whereas when you have thoughts of negativity and fear and doubt and all of that, it actually destructures your bio water. It makes it harder for your cells to communicate with one another, to process um, nutrients, to detoxify, etc. So we could continue down this allopathic path of, you know, well, let's just treat these macromolecules, let's just, you know, treat the, the chemical effects, but it's really putting the cart before the horse, like even when it comes to issues of, um, of psychology, mm. you know, there's this amazing, um, um, I forget if she's a neurobiologist, no, she's a psychiatrist and a, and a neurobiologist. Um, Anyway, her name is Dr. Sarah Van Anroy. She's in, in Colorado, and she treats every psychiatric patient that comes into her clinic with hydration first before anything mm. else. And she's found that with conditions even as severe as bipolar disorder, hydration works 
at least as effectively and sometimes more effectively than psychiatric medications. Wow. Because you can go after, you know, serotonin and, and all of these other things. But the fact is, when you restore balance to the cerebral spinal fluid, which is water, it's only one molecule different from seawater, then all of those neurochemicals naturally bring themselves into balance. And you wow. see that all over the body. That's just one example in our psychology, but you see that in every single bodily system that really hydration is at the root of health in every way. It is. And it's not necessarily about, you know, obviously we want to drink the good structured, clean water and you know all about this, but there's lifestyle involved in this as well, right? Of, of how our body is able to hold on to that water or not, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. In fact, I think that also, in a way, it's kind of putting the cart before the horse to look at the water we drink before we yes. look at how the water in our body functions. Because yes. hydration isn't a matter of how much we drink. That's just irrigation. And you can mm -hmm. irrigate all day long, but that says nothing of how much you'll absorb or how well your body will actually be able to put that into use. So there are a few different factors that I look at first when I'm dealing with clients and when it comes to their lifestyle and, and how optimized their internal body water is. And hydration, what it really comes down to is, okay, how structured is your bio water? Um, how efficiently can your cells absorb and expel water? Um, what is the deuterium content of the water or the proteum content of the water? And then what is the mineral balance of the water? Because, you know, our bodies are basically oceans like the only mm -hmm. reason we are able to walk on land at all is because our ancestors evolved in the ocean when they started to walk on land mm -hmm. they carried the oceans within them as their own bloodstreams and so even now we have oceanic bloodstreams and our blood plasma mirrors the mineral ratios of marine plasma back during the Cambrian period when vertebrates first left, we still carry Cambrian oceans with us. So when we see a deviation from that mineral profile, when it becomes less oceanic, that's a state of dehydration. You know, mm. you could call it a state of mineral deficiency, but we're not bodies of water, we're bodies of salt water. So mineral deficiency is a type of dehydration. Um, and then, you know, we look at, we measure the phase angle to see how hydrated somebody is. And a phase angle test is basically just a measurement of how much electricity, how much uh -huh. bioelectricity is in your body. So it measures um, the electrical charge at the cell membrane, which mediates the osmotic flow of water. And so literally the same measurement that we use for what is your prana, what is your mana, what is your chi, what is your charge, what is your voltage? it's directly correlated to your hydration. Yes. They're the same thing. Yes. You want more life force energy, you need more hydration. Um, and then how well your body can maintain that voltage comes entirely down to the structure of, of the intracellular fluids. And then we also look as well at, at how, um, how easily those um, internal waters can transition, how, how well they flow, how well they transition from one um, hydrological system in the body to another. So for example, you know, is your lymph converting to blood and, and back easily enough? Are you getting stagnation of water in certain parts of your body, like with, um, with edema or mm. holding onto water weight or stuff like that? So you want to make sure as well that the hydrological systems are, are flowing naturally. How do you test for all of that? So you have specific tests that you can give people for that, or how do you evaluate those different things in people? If, if you're in a clinic where they have a phase angle test, that's mm -hmm. ideal for, for that measurement. But a lot of it is just speaking with people and seeing kind of, you know, what are their experiences, what are their symptoms and what are their lifestyles? Um, and as you know, you know, there are lifestyle practices like putting your feet on the earth or getting early morning sunshine or mm -hmm. protecting yourself from electromagnetic frequencies. And those alone will address a lot of these different things. Yep. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's a hard one for people to understand because we're, our society is so technology uh, addicted. Mm -hmm. And I find for myself that that was one of the biggest things I noticed when I started mitigating non-native EMF and grounding on a daily basis. And not even for like hours, you know, if, if I could go for a hike with my grounding shoes on, amazing. But I can't always do that. You know, if I can just go out in my yard for 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there, 10 minutes there, 
I realize I'm not chasing down electrolytes all the time, you know, Mm -hmm. not trying to pour, I haven't used like an actual electrolyte powder in (laughs) almost a year, probably. Um, I use a little bit of Quinton and I structure my water and that's all I, that's all I really need. Um, but when I had AirPods in and, you know, (laughs) was on my phone constantly trying to build my account and build my fault, all that stuff, I forget it. I was constantly dehydrated. And Mm -hmm. I think so many people just think, like you said, it's like an irrigation thing. It's like, just drink more water. Anytime I do a video or a post on hydration, some really smart person in the comments is like, drink half your body weight in ounces. Mm -hmm. Get out of my comments. (laughs) Bless their hearts. They just start because that's, you know, that's the Wikipedia answer. That's the standard lazy answer for it. But absolutely, if you're in the presence of strong man made EMFs, your body will not be able to absorb water very well, regardless of how high quality it is. Because again, it's that absorption by your cell membranes, and that's an electrical process. And so if you are shorting out the voltage at the cell membranes, if you're shorting out the circuit, or if your tight junctions are starting to resonate at the wrong frequency, because we are beings of resonance, and we Mm -hmm. will start to resonate with the frequencies that we are around most often, then you literally cannot absorb the water. So all of these biohacking tools that we use, all of these, um, these technologies, these hacks, these, you know, like PEMF devices Mm -hmm. and grounding pads and all of that, really, it's just to mimic nature. You know, if we were living our natural lifestyles, we would be super hydrated. But instead, we're living in deserts. Indoor climates are deserts. We have, you know, artificial heating and and cooling that dries us out. We're drinking Mm -hmm. a very processed diet that dries us out. We're in the presence of EMFs that dries us out. We're sitting still and stagnant, which dries us Mm -hmm. out. Most people don't realize that one of the most- electricity. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Movement is the one of the most important steps in hydration. Again, it doesn't matter how much high quality water you're drinking. If you're sitting still all the time, the hydraulic networks of your body won't even be able to deliver that to your cells. Mm-hmm. You know, of course, our, our hearts act like vortexes that swirl blood through our bodies and thank God for that. But the other hydraulic networks in our body, they don't have a pump. And so they only move when we move. Our fascia is is an irrigation network of 80% water and 20% protein that delivers these droplets of water to each and every one of our cells. And if we're not moving and twisting and creating that piezoelectric charge, like you just said, then our cells aren't getting nourished and we're gonna develop dryness and and tightness and um, fascial uh, clumping in those areas. And what we're finding is that a lot of um, a lot of chronic pain, a lot of uh, joint pain, and these kinds of issues—they're really just localized water shortage. They're localized drought in the body because those areas, either through stagnation or through EMF exposure, whatever it is, they're not getting the hydration in those areas. But it's not just a matter of getting the water to the cells through the fascia. It's also a matter of being able to take um, detoxifying water out of the cells once Mm. it's been used and then cycle that through the lymphatic system again. And that's another thing that only happens when we move. Your lymphatic fluid moves when you move. And when we sit still and stagnant, it's literally like we are soaking in our own sewage. You have more lymphatic fluid in your body than you do blood. You have three times more lymphatic fluid. And so keeping that flowing is a huge part of hydration. Yeah. That's what I tell people when you move, don't just walk, just, you know, do I'm out on my morning walk every morning at sunrise. And I'm like one arm up and the other arm up and like (laughs) doing weird. And I'm like nine months pregnant right now. So I know people are like, what is this woman doing? (laughs) Getting those lymph nodes nice and juicy. That's how you do it. Yeah. (laughs) We walk like robots through the world all the time. We, We become so linear and it's interesting because it's a lot like, you know, water takes the shape of whatever vessel it's in and so does Mm -hmm. our body water our body water and our mentality our psyche is patterned by our body water and so our psyche also takes the shape of our vessel and when our vessel is still and when we're just moving in like linear patterns our thinking becomes so linear and um 
we lose this creative connectivity that happens when our body water is also moving and our vessels are less less linear in their movement patterns as well so i always say you know it's not about going and getting a really tough workout and i mean that can be great for cardiovascular health and all that but when it comes to hydration even a really small movement to you is a really big movement to yourselves so it's about as many different novel kinds of movements as you can make with as many different parts of your body as you can make and you can almost make that like a game every day Mm -hmm. like can i move a part of my body today in a way in a direction that i've never moved it before Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I think people overcomplicate things, you know, you got to do CrossFit and you have to, people want like a regimen, they want an exercise, a regimen, a plan. And so when you kind of give ex- instructions, like just move and be more natural and put your feet on the earth and people are like, too simple. Can't do that. (laughs) Not going to help me. (laughs) It's like, oh, it's really not the case. You know, it's Occam's razor, right? The simplest solution is usually the truth. And when it comes down to the most effective things, a lot of times they're just the simplest and the subtlest things. Like how can we just be more human? Humans are aqua sapiens. We are bodies of water. So when we put water first, as simple as that is, everything else falls into place. Then light falls into place, then sound falls into place, then frequency falls into place, then movement falls into place. I mean, Creator has made us so that we are almost entirely water molecules. And I've found that in every case, when that becomes the central defining factor of health, there are just cascades of effects in every other area of life from psychology to sexuality to relationships, not to mention just the physicality of, of your health. There was this one doctor, I forget her name, oh. but basically she had been going through different medical training programs for about 20 years. She went through um, medical school as a Western um, doctor of allopathic medicine. Then she went through school for naturopathic medicine. Then she became an acupuncturist. And then she went, I think she also did some kind of training in, um, what was it? Some some kind of psychology. Anyway, um, I can send you a quote from her if you want to put it in the show notes for yeah. people. But basically she said, It took me 20 years of studying all of this to realize that the answer was water, that the single unifying thread in all systems of medicine between East and West is how do these things affect our body water. And so it doesn't matter what form of healing you're talking about, whether it's something as esoteric as Reiki or sound healing or something as, you know, functional as, you know, SSRI medications or something. Yeah. Ultimately, if something is to be effective, it's only effective because of the way that it affects your body water. Some right. way that it brings it into balance, either it brings the structure into balance or it brings the minerals into balance or it brings the hydrogen, the isotopic ratios into balance, or it just increases the volumes and the amounts. You know, even before we started discovering all of this amazing stuff about structured water and molecular hydrogen enriched water and and deuterium depleted water and double helix water and infoceutical water and all these amazing functional waters that we have now that have been shown to be so beneficial for so many things there was dr batman gellich back in the 1980s who had an incredible rate of curing innumerable diseases just using regular tap water but getting people to drink more of it and in- increasing the, the salt ratios and the mineral ratios of it significantly interesting i never heard of that before <laughs> oh yeah you gotta check him out his story is amazing actually he was a political prisoner in oh. iran and and um, because he was a doctor the guards kept bringing him sick inmates and saying take care of this person but he didn't have any medicine. He didn't have any tools. He had nothing except for water and salt. And so he was like, mm, OK, here you go. But what <laughs> he started seeing was that um, people started healing, that it wow. was curative. And so once he actually got out of prison, he actually decided to increase his stay in prison. They were going to let him out. And he was like, no, I have to study this more. I have to understand the, the physiology of this better. So he stayed in there a while, kept studying it. And then when he got out, he devoted his entire career to studying hydration in the body and his books are amazing because he breaks down the exact physiology of how nearly every single disease can be traced back to dehydration at its root wow and the physiological pathways of dehydration i mean 
it makes sense, right? Like every state of disease, every name that we have for various disease states, they're kind of just um, synonyms for various kinds of dehydration. Dehydration is going to manifest differently in different bodies, mm -hmm. depending on, you know, your, your, your genetics and your lifestyle and all of that. But what happens when the body doesn't have enough water is it starts rationing its limited water supplies away from less essential areas. And then those areas start to malfunction. Mm -hmm. And we label those malfunctions as various diseases when truthfully, it's your body trying to conserve and, and doing its absolute best to um, put to good use the, the limited water that it has. And so one of the primary things that happens when you are dehydrated and your body starts to release these water management regulators, they're like, um, they're like the guards that come out and say, okay, we don't have enough water to go here. We'll bring it over here. And those are things like histamines and prostaglandins. Mm. And we know that histamines and prostaglandins are at the root of so much inflammation yep. and acidity in the body. And so Western medicine would go after those histamines and say, okay, well, we need to take antihistamines. We need to blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But if we recognize that that's a result of dehydration, it shifts the whole um, root cause conversation to one of this is an aquatic terrain we treat that aquarium first and everything else comes into balance. Wow. Yeah. That's so fascinating because, you know, like I said, we just want to give it, we want to have a specific test for it. We want to test the genetics. We want to test, you know, the different hormone levels, blood levels, but if we could actually just simplify things a little bit more, I think that would make it easier for people. So I hope you're enjoying today's episode with Jen Isabel Friend. Make sure, again, you check out all the links that I have down in the show notes, all the resources, all the things that we talk about are available to you in those show notes, as well as her Water is Life website, where you can see a lot of the different products that she has tested for water safety and how to source water. So again, check those out and all of those timestamps are going to help you navigate through this episode. If there's a particular topic that you really enjoyed listening to, or maybe didn't understand the first time around, those are available to you down there in the show notes. And I have one more sponsor to thank for today's episode, Upgraded Formulas. You can use my code YOGI12 or YOGI to save on their hair tissue mineral analysis. Now in this episode, Jen and I talk extensively about minerals and how the mineral balance in our body is very important to hydration. So how in the world do you know if you have a correct or incorrect mineral imbalance? you can use a hair tissue mineral analysis to really get to the bottom of what minerals are out of balance. As I mentioned in the very beginning of this episode, I do not like electrolyte powders that have sodium potassium in unnatural ratios and magnesium. This can make mineral balance in the body even more challenging and throw things off even more. So the hair tissue mineral analysis from Upgraded Formulas, I also recommend getting a consultation with this, is going to help you to balance your minerals and going to give you direction so that you don't end up taking supplements exogenously and making things worse than they were to begin with. Thank you again to Upgraded Formulas for sponsoring today's episode. My code again there is YOGI12, or if you've already used that code before, you could use my code YOGI. Okay, let's go ahead and get back into this episode with Jen Isabel so, Friend. I guess when a client comes to you with, let's just say they have obesity, you know, they want to lose like 40 pounds or something. How mm -hmm. do you go about treating someone like that and, and, and helping them with obesity? Is it, do you do nutrition piece or is it simply like, Hey, let's look at your lifestyle. Let's kind of assess your redox potential or, you know, how easily your body, I, I would call it redox, but how easily your body can hang on to the water. Like, how would you go about that process with someone? Well, I don't treat anything. I'm not a clinician. And so I don't diagnose or treat or anything like that. But if somebody wants help with their hydration, then there are a lot of ways. Um, and really it just comes down to looking at these, these simple factors of like, okay, where is your nearest spring? Because water has the most medicinal or nature has the most medicinal healing water. Can you go wildcraft and forage for spring water? 
And I find that even that pilgrimage of just people going through that process, it brings them in closer contact with the earth. They take their feet off their, take their shoes off their feet. They ground on the earth. They get in the sunshine. You know, there's, there's that, um, reciprocity of recognizing the birthplace of life from the womb of mother earth that has a spiritual cascade of benefits and and the sovereignty that happens of you know taking your your bloodstream out of the hands of corporations from bottles mm. and from the government for the municipal tap supply and you're literally making your blood of the blood of mother earth and so there are a lot of things that i don't even have to counsel people on but that one practice alone has a cascade of effects that affects every other part of their lives. But for a lot of people, that's not possible. Um, and even when it is, you know, you, you want to, of course, incorporate other practices as well. So we look at their drinking water, and that's a huge part of it. We look at their diet. We want to make sure that dietarily they're getting uh, food that has a high water content and also food that is going to support their body's ability to produce more metabolic water, which of course is deuterium mm -hmm. depleted. So a lot of that is really high quality fats. You know, mm -hmm. for every 100 grams of high quality fat you eat, your body produces 110 grams of metabolic water versus every uh, 100 grams of carbs you eat, your body only produces about 80 grams of metabolic water. So mm -hmm. it's not about taking anything out. It's not about saying, you know, stop eating your favorite foods. It's like, okay, how can we um, create a more hydrated diet and then a lot of it is about looking at um of course their their minerals getting their mineral ratios in balance and really just especially in the case of something like obesity setting up habits setting up patterns around hydration and drinking water and making sure that in that case uh, in particular a lot of times it's about quantity of water most people don't like to drink water because it doesn't taste good because they're drinking swag water. Their body right. isn't craving it <laughs> yeah. because it's nasty water. And so we get them mm -hmm. on really good water. And we make sure they're drinking enough of it. A lot of times we misperceive our hunger signals uh, or mm -hmm. we misperceive our thirst signals as hunger signals. So most of the time we're really just thirsty, but we think we're hungry. So we overeat. And then, you know, there's there's also the laminar terminalis in the brain, which gets easily tricked. And that's kind of what is responsible for letting us know when we're one of the pathways responsible for letting us know when we're thirsty or not. And it used to be, you know, in our ancestral past that the only thing to drink in our environment was water. And so mm -hmm. if we drank liquid, the laminar terminalis would signal us that our thirst was quenched. And now we have juices and coffees and teas and, you know, bottled waters and all these things that actually dehydrate us mm -hmm. over time. But the laminar terminalis might still turn off that thirst signal. So it's also about kind of retraining our brain to recognize what is thirst? What does it feel like in my body in particular? You know, for some people, thirst might manifest as um, an afternoon slump where they get kind of mm -hmm. tired. It might manifest as a headache for some people. It might manifest as hunger. It might manifest as like moodiness or just feeling like a little bit annoyed or aggravated or something um and so really recognizing what it is for your own individual physiology and turning to water instead is, is huge for a lot of people and so do you like um if someone can't necessarily go out to a spring and collect water i know there's a website called find a spring i think dot org yeah. or dot com yeah that you can go and just the best yeah you can go find springs in your area i've had a lot of clients to actually do that and and it's a great experience um but let's say somebody can't necessarily do that due to just maybe they're just sick or just super busy how do you feel about people getting like spring water in glass delivered to their house do you think that's mm -hmm. a viable option for them as well well it really depends. So there's very few bottled water delivery places. I know of one out in California and one out in the Southeast, and that's about it, uh, at least in the US, that actually delivers raw, living, wild, unprocessed, undomesticated, untreated spring water straight from a spring. Mm. Most of what is labeled as spring water is actually artesian well water. So the bottled water industry actually lobbied to have the laws changed for what constitutes a spring. And now they can drill a borehole into an aquifer, pump up the water and call it spring water. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So I kind of think of drinking water as there's, there's really three main categories of drinking water, right? There's 
water that actively dehydrates us and that's the water mm -hmm. that most people drink tap water tap water <laughs> absolutely creates like a genocide of your microorganisms in your body that's going to dehydrate you over time chlorine dehydrates you over time mm -hmm. it's destructured and reverse osmosis and distilled water also because they're destructured um, it takes more energy for your body to convert it into H3O2 for your mm -hmm. cells than your body actually gets back from the hydroelectric energy that it gets from the water. Um, plus, it can strip minerals from you. It's an mm -hmm. aggressive solvent. It's been robbed of its minerals, and so yeah. it'll then rob the minerals from you. And so, um, so there are these dehydrating waters. That's most of what people drink. And then there's water that will satisfy your thirst. And that would be something like a bottled spring water something mm -hmm. that is probably an artesian well water but still at least it comes from nature even if it's been processed usually those have been processed through uh, uv or something like that um, but it still has a good mineral content to it and then the third category and this is what i like to teach people um, to bring their water back to is living water this is the water that will actually impart life it's coherent it's full spectrum it's balanced it's aerated, it contains all of the, the frequencies of nature, either it contains the, the full broad spectrum of frequencies from nature, the sights and the sounds and the, the light spectrum and all of that, or at the very least, it contains a certain um, bandwidth or a certain um, spectrum of, of light energy and electromagnetic frequency. So that would be the difference between something like using an analemma wand that contains the entire spectrum versus something like using infoceutical water where you can pattern your water specifically with, you know, like I like to pattern my water with oxytocin, for example, or you can mm. pattern your water with any, any frequency, any vitamin, any How mineral. Do you do that? <laughs> It's um it's called an infoceutical device. I have them at waterislife.shop. Okay. <clears throat> and so it's basically like pulsed electromagnetic field therapy, but using a very oh. specific uh, bandwidth. So for your daily drinking water, for daily hydration, I think full spectrum is best just to make up for anything that you're not getting in your lifestyle. If you didn't get the full spectrum of sun that day, if you haven't mm -hmm. been in the moonlight in a while, if right. you haven't been in starlight in a while, if you haven't gotten your feet on the earth, you need those frequencies, at least in your water, to communicate that to your body water. And so that's why I love something like the Analemma. But then if I want like, you know, a nootropic stack and I want alpha GPC and I want lion's mane mushroom and I want specific things, but I don't want to swallow a bunch of pills, then I'll program my water with that specifically. So that's kind of a rabbit trail. Yeah. <laughs> This, yeah. I've got, I have a Leela Q, um, the quantum block, and they were telling me I could do something similar with the block, like put mm -hmm. in, um, you know, different supplements that I wanted and then charge it next to the water and the water could take the frequency of, I haven't tried it, but I'm, cause I'm kind of like, huh, <laughs> that's something. I'm like, I'm cool with the structured water. I understand that I've gotten that down. We do that for all of our water, but this like adding different frequencies to water, I'm kind of like, oh, that's very interesting. So you can kind of charge your water with, they were like, oh, if you want to charge it with, like you said, vitamin C or charge it with these other things, you don't want to necessarily swallow handfuls of pills, you can do that. So mm -hmm. that's essentially what you're saying. You've got like a device that's specifically for that. Mm -hmm, exactly. Well, I mean, if you think about it bioenergetically, the only reason that any of these supplements or any kind of nutrition has effect on our body is, again, not because of the macromolecules of those substances, not because of the chemicals of those substances, but really, if you get down to it, it's because of the vibrational patterns and frequencies of those substances. And then those vibrations get communicated into our body water. And then our body water has that intelligence, it has that information. Now it knows how to operate. Now it knows what to tell the cells. Um, and so, you know, we can do that with our drinking water as well. Really, the water is inside of us and the water is outside of us. There's not a lot of difference between them. Like if we're talking mm -hmm. about healthy, living, balanced water, we want kind of the same functions in our internal waters and our external waters in terms of the electromagnetic spectrum and the, and the mineral profile and all of that. So, yeah, it's really fun to play around with all of the possibilities. Yeah. I like to think of it as like, of course water is a living being right she mm -hmm. is intelligence she is pure intelligence she is the body of consciousness she contains all of the memory and all of the information in this universe arcing back to the first moment of creation right it's it's held in those hydrogen bonds and so water 
just like us, because she's a body of water, she can be healthy or sick, alive or dead. And to bring her back to life, to bring her back into a state of health, she needs fundamentally the same things that we need. So just like we need to eat, we need to take mm -hmm. in the earth element. Water also needs to eat. She needs to take in the earth element in the form of minerals and electrolytes. Just like we need to breathe and we feel enlivened when we do pranayama breathing or even just take a few deep breaths, water also needs to breathe. And that's the aeration that happens when we vortex her or stir or spin her and she gets to absorb um, gases like oxygen and and um, carbonic acid and hydrogen and all these other things and just like we need to move mm -hmm. stay healthy water needs to move she goes to sleep she becomes dormant and comatose when she sits still and stagnant for too long just like we need healthy relationships in our lives and so one of the primary indicative factors of human health is the quality of your relationships isolation kills the mm -hmm. same is true of water you know when you have all of these uh, molecules in isolation with the hydrogen bonds are forming and breaking apart billions of times per second in the case of bulk unstructured water there's no um there's no relationships being formed you know you have different kinds of hydrogen bonds you have van der waals bonds you have electrostatic bonds you have all these different kinds that are a lot like the different kinds of relationships that we have whether they're romantic relationships or friendships or family dynamics and all of those when they're healthy strong bonds create a molecular matrix that acts like a community that molecular matrix of these water clusters, they literally act as memory cells and mm -hmm. they're what carry various frequencies of information, just like a culture or a community of humans. It's really important to have those quality connections, um, you know, just like we need light frequency and, mm -hmm. and light medicine and electromagnetic stimulation. Water needs that as well. Fundamentally, yeah. we have all the same. We need we need hygiene. Obviously, if you don't shower for a while, you're going to get gross and infected. Water is the same. That's why we filter her. That's why the hydrological mm -hmm. cycle filters water. She needs she needs all the same things that we do. So I think restoring water back to life is just a matter of saying, OK, what does nature do to water? Can we mimic nature and how can we honor her? and her needs and her love languages, what does she fundamentally need to be living and healthy? Like treat others as you would treat yourself and the same is true of water. Treat water as you would treat yourself. Exactly. Yeah, it's so funny. I was telling um, Dolph and Mario yesterday with Anna Lemma about my daughter. She's, yeah, you know, she's severely autistic, but she's very intuitive about what her body needs. Like she is one that when she comes home from school, she wants to just lay on the ground outside. And I mm -hmm. used to be like, that is so bizarre, but now I'm like, please go <laughs> like yeah. lay on the ground. I don't care. It's awesome. It's great. It's what you need to be doing, but she's kind of been watching me with what I do with my water. You know, mm -hmm. she, she watches it and it, for the longest time, she didn't really put much interest in it, but she started now. Cause I, I'm like, I have like these jars that I keep, <laughs> you know, <laughs> everything has to go through like my process. <laughs> <laughs> either it's in the quantum block or stir with the wand add in the little minerals and like mm -hmm. I have you know and then of course you have the like structuring bottles and mm -hmm. I just do all the things and now that's like all she'll drink like if it's mm -hmm. you know my husband will come home with like a bottled water because he still doesn't listen to me and he'll buy those I'm like don't buy those anymore <laughs> um please stop buying those but she won't drink the bottled waters anymore. She only wants my water. And, nice. so, and I'm like, she knows, like, I think she mm -hmm. feels it and, and it, it really does calm her body down. So she'll give me the water and like, she wants me to stir it. And then I've been teaching her. I'm like, we can talk to, you know, people watching this or listening might be like, now Sarah has totally lost it, <laughs> but we, <laughs> we put intention in our water, yeah. you know, like if she's not feeling well, I'm like, let's talk to the water and tell it, you know, you're not that you want to feel healthy and let's talk all the words and say all the things that we want to feel um, mm -hmm. from the water. And, and, and we kind of do that little routine with our waters. And I've been doing it with my water. Like all my water is like, we're going to have a beautiful, healthy, easy birth, you know, mm -hmm. like that's been my water the last couple of weeks. So beautiful. I don't think, I think people are like, why would you do that? You know, what's... <laughs> <laughs> show me the science right like and it's there the it science is, is there if people want to look into it <laughs> yeah can you talk about that a little bit 
Sure. Well, I mean, water is the primordial mirror, right? Well, first, I just want to touch on something you said that her body knows. And it's true. Our bodies yeah. as bodies of water, they are so intelligent when we get our minds out of the way. In fact, your body will actually preferentially choose higher quality water mm -hmm. over the swag water that it's already made of. And so within a month of drinking high quality water, and I've heard some people say even within just 10 gallons, you, you can actually replace your entire body volume with higher quality water, which is one reason why people notice a lot of times when you start drinking high quality structured water, you might end up peeing a lot more. Mm -hmm. And it's not for the same reason that you pee when you drink a bottle of swag water, which is that it's just running through you, but it's that your body is actually replacing um, the, the previous water in, in your, in your, in your tissues and your extracellular matrix. So I find that really interesting and yeah. beautiful to hear that she just, she knows. Yep. <laughs> and um, yeah. So again, water is the primordial mirror. She's always reflecting us back to ourselves. It's been said that um, our, our bio water is actually the storehouse of our subconscious mind. And there are some studies pointing in that direction, mm. which we can go into that are really interesting if you want to hear. Um, and that the collective water on the planet is really the storehouse of the collective subconscious, mm. our collective psyche. You know, what is the, what do they call it? The, um, the newosphere, I think it, it can be called. But basically, it's, it's like the, um, it's like our collective resonance. So when we expose water to certain frequencies, she will mirror those straight back to us. And what's interesting that um, I know you had uh, you had Jonathan Butts on mm -hmm. yes. your podcasts recently. Yeah. So one of the things that he's discovered in the laboratory, which I would love to see more scientists start working with, is that even if you um, expose water to a really negative and degrading frequency that would normally create entropy in the water, she'll actually take that and send it back again in a positive way that is more balanced. And so she has this way of refining and evolving everything if she's given a period of rest. So like if you expose water to 5G frequencies, mm -hmm. if you do it continuously, she'll get really um, aggressive. But if you do it with a period of rest, what she mirrors back is her version of that, which has actually been refined by the phi ratio. So she'll send back the same frequency but upgraded by the phi ratio. And she'll continue upgrading by that sacred geometry again and again until she's just created more, more harmony. And so she is this, I mean, she is the engine of evolution. She is the, the engine of, of consciousness. And so she responds to our own consciousness in these beautiful ways, creating artistry, creating formations. Um, yeah, it's, it's really sacred geometry in action. Yeah, it's amazing. And I think a lot of people have heard of Emoto and, and his work. Um, and I know Dr. Pollock, I'm going to be talking with him in a couple of weeks. He's started doing some really interesting work on water and consciousness and how mm -hmm. it holds and traps those frequencies and those vibrations. And you can actually see it in the water. So, mm -hmm. I mean, there, like you said, the science is, is actually there to support all of these things. Oh yeah. Well, for every single cluster of water molecules, you have at minimum 440,000 panels on it. And that's just the smallest unit of measurement that we've ever been able to measure. If we had stronger equipment, we would see that actually each of those panels is further subdivided into more panels and that really water is fractal in, in nature, that there's, there's actually no limit to the amount of surface area that is opened up on these water molecules. And each one of those panels is responsible for sensing and storing information, vibration, and frequency, sensing, storing, and transmitting um, and amplifying as well and transmuting one kind of frequency to another kind of frequency. So this is really the difference between structured and unstructured water is how mm. well is it able to do this? Like if you're looking at unstructured water, it's basically the same as the difference between coal and a diamond. Either way, it's just carbon, but the difference between coal and a diamond is how those carbon atoms come together. Mm. And if they are random and chaotic, like bulk water, then you have coal. If they are well-structured and coherent, then you have a diamond. And so when we're talking about structured water, it has a lot of the same um, uh, capacities that a crystal has, has piezoelectric properties. It's able to um, absorb, store, and transmit information and frequencies. One of my favorite structured water scientists, Dr. Rustam Roy, says that 
you can think of water molecules as being kind of like the alphabet and with bulk water it's just an alphabet soup that makes no sense but depending on the way those molecules come together they can channel an infinite amount of information and one of the many things that structures water is radiant energy radiant mm -hmm. frequencies from the environment so when you put your conscious awareness into the water it responds with structure because your conscious awareness is a form of radiant energy it's literal vibrations and and so the the structural matrix will actually mirror those back to you in ways and one of my favorite uh recent discoveries about water is that for every one part matter that would be the hydrogen and the oxygen right which you can almost you can't even consider that matter it's like two gases mm. coming together yep. but it's it's the only part matter for every one part matter there are a trillion parts photons oh wow a trillion parts photons so water is literally liquid light wow yeah That's photons amazing. and photons are are amazing because they're basically they're a type of boson and they are what interface with the quantum field. They're what mitigate the, the entry from the unmanifest into the manifest, from, from the material world to the, the unmanifest um, quantum field. And so if you have a trillion parts photons to one part matter, you have this, this liquid light, and then you look at the one part matter itself, which of course oxygen we know has six different valent states. It can have like, plus one and plus two and negative one and negative two and all these different uh, state valence states of its electrons. And each one of those act like kind of an on or an off switch. So if you liken water to a computer, for example, you know, there's some scientists who say that water is far beyond the most advanced quantum mm. computer that humans yeah. could ever, you know, that, that we could ever consider. Well, with a computer, you have ones and zeros. It turns on and off. And just with those two states, you have access to all of the information on the internet, you know, all of the cat pictures in existence, all of this, just with ones and zeros. So imagine just the, uh, the incredible increase in information storage if you had six states instead mm -hmm. of two. It's something like a billion times the information storing capacity of a computer chip. In fact, there are computers that are starting to be made with water now instead of instead wow. of quartz and silicone and then this is the most exciting thing to me i mean the light part is really exciting too but it just goes to show you like water is this infinite mystery we're still barely barely oh, yeah. barely scratching like, the surface not much yeah oh yeah. it's crazy you don't know anything so there are these um physicists like nasim haramin who say oh, yeah. that is, is, are you familiar with this that water opens black holes within it i've heard that i'm i'm kind of like what <laughs> <laughs> i know right it's incredible so the hydrogen in h2o which i mean hydrogen itself is the fuel of life the more hydrogen mm -hmm. in your water the more hydrating it is it really i think of it as being like the spirit of water especially protium hydrogen mm -hmm. so with protium hydrogen it's just one proton and one electron and these electrons are very unstable they're very playful they're always flitting around they're moving from this hydrogen to that hydrogen and back and forth etc and so sometimes quite often in fact they're not there at all they're not a part of the hydrogen and so you just have a naked proton every time you just have a naked proton our best understanding of what a proton actually is is that it is exactly like a black hole that it's basically mm -hmm. the 64 tetrahedron black hole so water is consistently opening up black holes within it which is part of what allows it to bring through so much information, so much resonance and so much vibration from the field. Wow. That's so amazing. Um, I would love to ask you kind of on the, on a different field. Um, if you're comfortable answering a lot, since we're talking so much about how water holds memory and it can hold frequencies, I would love to know your thoughts on, um, like Kangen water, uh, mm -hmm. how you, <laughs> Yeah. I'm sure you saw my post the other day. <laughs> oh, we're definitely on the same page about that, sweetie. <laughs> oh, I'm not a fan. I mean, I I want to give props where props are due. The one good thing about the whole Kangen trend is that it has awoken, awakened, awakened yeah. a lot of people <laughs> to the importance of water, you know. Right. 
because it is this whole MLM scheme and people get really right. like dogmatic about it, it, it's kind of spread like wildfire that oh, yeah. water is really important. So I'm grateful for that aspect of it. But otherwise, it's it's so divorced from real water science in a lot of ways because i mean basically they're freeing the hydrogen which as we just said is like the spirit of water but right. they're freeing the spirit of water by electrocuting it right. and saying that because it has such a high orp which is like a high you know electromagnetism that that makes it really healthy but in fact it has zero structural charge right. so they're breaking apart the hydrogen bonds to free the hydrogen. So it's completely unstructured, erratic, chaotic, aggressive. And when it comes to coherent water, yes, natural spring water does have higher levels of ORP. Structured water does have a higher ORP, but that comes from ambient resonant geomagnetic fields. It do, the, the earth doesn't electrocute water. Right. She exposes her to like radiant field vibrations from geomagnetism in rocks and the Schumann resonance and all exactly. of that. It's like low frequency consistent. It's not like strong voltage DC currents. Ultimately, <laughs> I think if you wouldn't do it to your own body, don't do it to yourself. And like right. all of the studies that they often quote for, oh, look how it's been good for this, that and the other. Well, a lot of those researchers were doing these studies back in the 90s and the early 2000s. And around 2007, they realized that all of those benefits were actually coming from the hydrogen in the water mm. and not from the alkalinity of the water. And so, you know, a lot of, um, at least a couple like Dr. Himitsu Hayashi and um, uh, another one, I forget his name, uh, president of the Korean Water Society, they did a lot of those formative papers that Kangen people still quote, but those researchers actually shifted their entire careers away from that kind of water and started just studying hydrogen enriched water instead and saying, what are the best ways that we can enrich water with hydrogen instead of using electrolysis to, to increase the alkalinity of it. And in the meantime, since then, there have actually been some studies coming out and showing that Kangen water can create things like cell necrosis because mm. your cells actually have to work really hard to maintain their, their natural uh, balance after years of drinking this water. I know so many people who develop things like H. pylori and ulcers wow. and a lot of bloating after years of drinking the water. Wow. So yeah, in the long term, it can be really dangerous. And I'm not denying that people have good effects from it in the short term, again, because there's so be much more hydrogen. Medic. Yeah. Yeah. And also because if you spend that much money on a machine, you're going to drink a lot more water. Right. <laughs> <So> exactly. <laughs> ultimately, I think it comes down to not using machines at all, mm -hmm. but just mimicking nature. And that's why my favorite water filter bar none is definitely the spring aqua. So it mm. actually creates a oh, higher yeah. ORP than the Kangen. It releases more hydrogen than the Kangen, but it does it in a way that just mimics the earth's geology. It recreates the water from Lourdes, France, which is some of the most healing water in the world, the spring at Bernadette's Grotto. Um, yeah, highly structured, highly coherent, and you really feel the difference from it. It's not, uh, it's not just like some techno craze like the Kangen. <laughs> Yeah. I'm like, is the money really that good? Because anytime I post about water, they're like, Psh. in my <laughs> comments, I'm like, the money can't be that good. Is it really that? I mean, it's, yeah, it's crazy phenomenon, but I, it's like I that tribal mentality, you know, like people get on these teams and it's, yeah, it's like a yeah. tribal family feeling. I think. I think so too. Yeah. That's, that's one of the things I, I deal with a lot on social media, but you know, I guess just to kind of bring it around, um, a, a lot of people I know are going to have questions of like, what can I do? So you were mentioning even distilled and RO water, if you're going to have those, because a lot of people ask me about those. And I always say, add minerals back in and structure it. If you're going to drink those, don't drink mm -hmm. them flat and as they are. Is that what you would say? Or how would you kind of go about it if someone only wanted to have those types of water. Yeah, so absolutely in some cases that's the best water that people can, can access, get, you know. It's so, not tap water, it's better than tap water. Exactly. So we have to understand how to bring it back to life and ultimately right. again you just want to mimic what nature does. So the steps that I teach are forage if you can, you know, go find a spring if you can, but otherwise filter, structure, balance, energize and embody are my five steps. So filtration 
There are a lot of amazing filters out there, like um, the Spring Aqua, etc. If you have to use reverse osmosis or distillation, then you want to make sure to definitely do the other steps, which are um, and actually the spring aqua is the only thing I found that does all of these steps. It, it filters, structures, balances, and energizes the water. So um, otherwise you have to get separate tools to do each of these mm -hmm. things. And some tools overlap and do multiple things. The second step of structuring the water, obviously we've been talking about structure and there are a lot mm -hmm. of different ways that you can do that. You can do it through epitaxy or transference, which would be a method like, for example, the analemma or the uh, Lila quantum block or something like that, or, or crystals, which I don't think are incredibly effective. Um, according to Dr. Flanagan, actually, Dr. Flanagan has some amazing drops that you can ah. use for water structure. Um, there's so many different methods. Vortexing and flow mm -hmm. forms are probably my two favorite methods of structuring because, yeah, they're, they mimic nature in really beautiful ways. So filter, structure, and then balance. And when you come to this balance step, it has a lot to do with making sure that water is eating and breathing properly. So like you said, adding the minerals and the electrolytes back to make sure she has that good um, balanced profile, but also making sure that the water is well aerated and has a good balance of gases. So mm. in this step, I would also include adding some kind of molecular hydrogen, whether that's uh, yes. uh, an H2 tab or um is something like that to, to increase the dissolved gases in the water. And if and again, there's overlap. So for example, if you put your water through a vortex or a flow form, that's also going to help aerate the water and oxygenate the water. So you have some overlap there. And one question about the hydrogen tablets while you're on that. Do you need to, because we love the hydrogen tablets here, do you need to drink that water like immediately to get the gases as they're coming off of the tablet? Or can you allow the tablet to dissolve and then drink the water, like let's say a half hour later. What's the best way to go about that with the hydrogen tablets? With the tablets, you wanna drink it sooner rather than later. I mean, there's no like exact cutoff time, but it's not as well dissolved and immersed into the water as some other methods. So for mm -hmm. example, um, there are certain electrolysis machines that like will- Brown's gas machine. Brown's gas machines, exactly. Yeah. You just wanna make sure that with something like that, because it will dissolve the, the gas into the water in a really, a much more stable way that will last for a longer time. You just wanna make sure that with one of those, it's electrolyzing a separate reservoir of water that then the gas is channeled into the drinking water rather than electrolyzing the drinking water itself got it so that'll create more stability okay mm -hmm. so yeah you don't want to just necessarily let it sit there for hours it's not going to be as effective if, if you're what i try to do is just when i'm drop it in there try to drink it pretty soon after within like yeah. a couple minutes to try to get the benefits of the hydrogen for sure yeah you want to get it all in cool Okay, and then so <laughs> filter structure balance. And then the last step or the second to last step is energize. Mm -hmm. So that would be, you know, making sure that it's exposed to whatever you want it to be a vessel for. You know, if you expose your water to a certain kind of music, you are mm -hmm. literally drinking in that music. If you expose your water to moonlight, you are drinking in that moonlight. Everything is vibration and what our water is exposed to becomes us, becomes our vibration in a lot of ways. So this is one reason why I really caution people against, you know, having your water hanging out with you while you're watching a horror movie or something oh, like that, yeah. <laughs> especially if it uh, um, is in something like a Mayu or if it's swirling, there was a researcher, Dr. Uh, he wasn't a doctor, never mind, Theodore Schwenk. He was one of my favorite uh, water researchers and Schwenk showed that water is most sensitive to stimuli while she's moving. So movement mm -hmm. actually opens up all of her sensory organs. So she's seeing and feeling and hearing and tasting and smelling so much more while she is active than she does when she's stagnant. So while you're vortexing a water is a great time to also energize it. Mm -hmm. um, but again, there's a lot of ways to energize. You can use like the infoceutical thing that we're we were talking about earlier. Um, you can just pray into your water, sing to it, love it all kinds of ways. And then the last step, which we covered pretty in depth is embody. And those are all of the lifestyle factors. And even though mm -hmm. it's the last step out of five, it's the most important one. And you could mm -hmm. spend 99% of your time just on that one and be more effective than if you spent all of your time just on the drinking the water. water. I agree completely. Yeah. It's so funny. You say that I was stirring my water this morning and my husband came in the kitchen, like bitching about something. And I was like, Psh, get away from my water. <laughs> I love that. He's like, what? <laughs> He's like, now you're She's totally listening. I'm like, please don't talk like that around my water. I can't. Like, you just yeah. have to stop. You have to go somewhere else with that. 
<laughs> Water is sacred. And yeah. really, it, everything that we're doing with all of these processes is creating holy water. And so everything that your water is exposed to as much as possible should really be a blessing. You know, it's it's been said that water is the sensory organ of the earth. When you taste mm-hmm. her, she's tasting you. When you see her, she's seeing you. She is constantly perceptive and aware. And it's so beautiful to recognize that consciousness. It shifts everything, doesn't it? It does. It does. And, you know, if you were to leave your water exposed to sunlight or moonlight, how, because I get this question a lot, how long do you need to expose your water to those things for it to pick up those frequencies? And then how long is it going to hold on to those frequencies? Mm -hmm. That's a really good question. So generally water responds a lot better to moonlight than she does Mm. to sunlight. Water picks up a lot more energy and becomes a lot more active in the moonlight. Um, Schauberger went deep into this phenomenon generally with the sunlight it creates what Schauberger calls a lazy water. So the, mm. the bonds start to loosen a little bit. She just gets a little bit slower, a little bit less less active. Um, and so we don't want to, especially in the heat, like I wouldn't mm. put my water out in the sunshine at like 12 noon or the heat of the day because heat also loosens structural bonds. So if you just want solar energy in the water, I would recommend um, early in the morning or before sunset because it's a really nice spectrum of light, as you Mm -hmm. know, that you get at that time. And then if I wanted to do it during the day, I would just leave it out for maybe a few minutes and no Mm -hmm. more because, I mean, she picks up on everything instantaneously. The structure of water is constantly shifting, which is one of the reasons why you got to be wary of any kind of um, water that is marketed to you as being already structured Mm. because she's constantly responding to everything she can lose her structure and pick up another structure Mm -hmm. at the speed of thought i mean you structure your water in one minute but then you drink the water while you're feeling you know grief or anger or something like that it's going to be restructured as it moves down your esophagus Mm. so she's always responding so it's really not necessary to expose her to something for a really long period of time but her capacity to store information is directly proportional to the strength of the hydrogen bonds. So if you create a really strong structural matrix first, and then you expose her to the frequency that you want, she's going to hang on to that frequency longer, which is why I put it in two steps in, in, the, in that five step process, structure and then energize, because mm-hmm. the stronger the structure, the longer she'll hold on to the information. Even though when you energize, it does also kind of structure. And while you're structuring, it does also kind of energize. There's some overlap, but I really see it as, as two separate steps. Wow. That's so fascinating. And I hope people don't get too o- overwhelmed with a lot of this information because there it's a lot. Like we said, you we know like that much about water. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, you know, I say just try to keep it as simple as you can mm-hmm. and just do what you can. There's, I think that just putting intention on your water is going to really, really go a long way for people. And I think minerals are important too. I was going to ask you uh, one more question. Cause I feel like we could probably talk like another, like two hours or something, yeah. <laughs> but I, I would love to know kind of what are your favorite uh, minerals that you add back into your water? Do you have any in particular? Yeah. You mentioned Quinton earlier and they're definitely my favorite, favorite. I absolutely love them. Um, I also really like Minbiotics because mm-hmm. Um, they come from this uh, volcanic kind of mineral it has a really broad spectrum and also the way that natural action in particular processes them they're also structured they're also energized and in a pinch if somebody doesn't have access to filtration they can even act, act as a filter because they'll neutralize toxins in the water mm. so that one can be a great one if you're traveling if you're on the go to just have that with you um, and those are and that, what's that one protein. called again minbiotics Min, okay Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, that's from natural action. And actually on my site, waterslife.shop, everything is broken into these categories just to make it easy for people. It's like filter, structure, balance, energize, embody. You just, because I'm with you, like it sounds complicated, but really it's just, it's simple at its essence. If, if people do nothing else except just restore relationship with their water, that alone is the most important thing Mm -hmm. that we can do just recognizing her sentience and starting to develop some kind of reciprocity and communion as woo as that might sound, you know, 
most of my research actually is not just in the in the physiology of water, but also kind of the sociology and, and the grander um, relationship that humanity has with water throughout history. And you see a direct correlation between the more that water is treated as an inanimate object, even on a collective scale, the more drought and desertification intensifies. And so really restoring that communion is not only for our health and our benefit, but for the health and benefit of the collective and the planet as well. Absolutely. That's so beautiful. Well, so you mentioned your website. That's probably a great place for people to find you and then all these resources. Um, how else can people find you if they want to you know, learn more about you and kind of dive into your work? And I don't know if you take on clients or anything like that. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, so I'm really active on Instagram. It's my name at Jen Isabel Friend. I teach courses and webinars uh, on water and we have a subscription as well. And there's a lot of free webinars and um, really easy access courses. Those are at waterslife.teachable.com. I have a lot of free videos and blogs at waterslife.love. I do one-on-one -on -one consultations with people. I'm on YouTube, I'm on Telegram. I'm, I kind of try to be a little bit everywhere. <laughs> Awesome. And then the shop, of course, is waterslife.shop. So yeah, that's where it's a find. great resource. And I'll make sure I link all of that. I'll get your, your email and everything. We'll link all that under the show notes for everybody. If they want to go into some of these amazing resources, because I think, you know, once you start thinking in this direction, I think it kind of opens up a whole new world for people. And we've been so trapped into thinking like, I got to count my carbs and I have to eat this specific thing. And it gets really exhausting after a while to just be myopically focused into this one area. And so I feel like this conversation and all the things you've mentioned just opens up a whole new world for people to really explore with their health. Yeah, absolutely. Water is life. So, you know, the more we understand water, the more we understand life and ourselves and what it means to be human. So thank you so much for facilitating this conversation today and having me on. It's been really fun to chat with you. Yeah, it's been a blast. Thank you so much.